So I know why you wanted him or recommended that he accept the plea deal. It's because of this DNA evidence that looked pretty damning. So let's go straight to the heart of the case, the DNA, what it showed and how you dealt with it. So at first I saw the DNA evidence and I thought there is no way to deal with it possibly. <laughs> because in essence, what happens is after the stop and after the arrest in New Jersey, they'll have technicians who are police officers typically swab various parts of the gun and depending on the case, the bullets found in the gun for DNA. What they will do is they've developed a procedure to swab the certain areas of the gun most likely to reveal or contain DNA from people who would handle the gun. So the most likely places that you would handle the grip, the trigger, the slide. And, you know, obviously DNA is more likely, DNA we're talking about, obviously, there are different types of DNA, but it's called contact DNA. It's the, basically when you sweat, your body will shed skin cells that can be deposited on items. And it's more likely to be deposited on rough surfaces. So they kind of, in their protocols, they swab various areas of the gun, most likely to have this contact DNA. So in our case, they swabbed the gun and they sent it off for testing. And the analysts tested the various areas that they swabbed. And when the analysts test the DNA, what they'll do is they'll develop one or more profiles. There can either be a single source, which means it's only coming from one profile, or it can be a mixture coming from more than one profile. And the single source profiles are always the ones most difficult as a defense attorney to contest because for a host of reasons, it's less likely to be transferred and it's more likely to be kind of considered quote unquote foolproof in a court of law. 